Today is a pretty cool day because we have something going on that doesn't happen all that often. We have an in-person training class with Simpson Strong Tie. It's something we've done in the past, but Steven and Fox are not yet certified to do the repairs that we're doing at the windmill. They understand the process, they've taken online training, but now they get to do it in person, hands on, and see what it's going to be like to work with the products we're working with. So in the description down below, I have a link to this website over here. This is through Simpson Strong Tie, and they have a ton of different resources to learn about anything and everything from deck building to trust fundamentals and everything in between. Go down, make an account, and from there, you can go through each of these courses and it'll teach you things along the way. You'll get a little certificate at the end saying you've done training for X amount of time. These are going to look great for potential employers. Show them that you're actually taking initiative and want to learn. This video is not sponsored by Simpson Strong Tie. I absolutely love that company though and utilize them for quite a bit. So that's what we have going. We're going to finish up this deck today. Quick little two day banger. We're going to head over to our storage yard where we're meeting up with Ian, who is our Simpson rep. We've worked with him for a four or five years now. We're going to do the in-person training for Steven and Fox to where they have a good understanding of what they're doing. And then we're going to come back here, wrap up the deck. All we have left to do is slap down the deck boards and then do the handrail around the thing. Everything's pre-painted and we're good to go. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys enjoy learning something outside of the framing realm. The windmill is coming up quick. Head mounted GoPro off the edge of a cliff. If you guys haven't seen that, here's a photo of it up over here. Let's get to it. Let's have a good day. Let's see where it goes. This process is completely free, and I highly suggest any of you contractors out there to utilize the resources that Simpson Strong Tie has to offer. Teaching your employees online is very easy to do, and then the in person training, like we're doing here, is also free and great for everybody. Yeah, I'd have to calculate it. Okay. We, have, we have factors on our data, sheet. Okay, yeah, cool. our data sheet says for. I'm showing you this because you guys are going to get to see all these products in action on a real job site here soon. I've been working on this project since 2019 behind the scenes, getting planning, preparation, and engineering going, and I am super pumped that we're actually going to start it soon. I have a windmill that was built in 1937 and the foundation is crumbling. We're coming in with Specialty Simpson Strong Tie products to reinforce this foundation and make sure it can stand for another 100 years. The view is beautiful, we're going to be right on the cliff side, waterfront, and I'm going to show you guys the process from start to finish. Park Street? On Park Street. Yeah. Like, walk out of downtown. Yep. This is crazy. It is, huh? Pretty cool, huh? Right there. This is gonna get so hard. I'm trying to think, do you know where the Elks Club is? Have you guys, is this your guys' first Elks? time seeing this? Did you guys do this? No, he, he does it, yeah. I, I was uh, at the training we did. I don't know if it's the Elks, but yeah. also, like your second time right, seeing yeah, it? Right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it quite a few times. Oh, okay. company. Yeah, yeah. Apple property that was Stuff's crazy, huh? They had a garage on it. They that down. They put a few flags. So the biggest thing we want to watch okay. out for is stuff like that. Now, since you're going to be doing that 207 slurry coat on top, you don't have to do the skim coat on, on top of the fabric, right? So that's a lot easier to fill in. If you butted those together, these little hairs, I call them, on the end right here, when you butt those two together, those things stick out. So we're on day two. We're going to get this thing wrapped up right now. I had our Simpson training this morning. We got Steven and Fox certified for the FRP installing. We're gonna wrap this deck up today. We got paint going. Gonna get deck boards up here right now. I broke my big camera, my DSLR. I'll put a picture of it up over there. Um, it took a dive today and it's no longer. Have a new one on the way, but we're gonna be shooting GoPro today.
A lot of people wouldn't think twice about it, but the codes actually changed on handrails not all that long ago here in California. Handrail height before was always 36 inches, now it's 42. Along with the new 42 inch height requirement, we also have to make sure we're less than four inches in between any of our pickets up there. We also can't be any bigger than four inches from the bottom runner down to the decking as well. Now the reason for this is because I'm sure some kid fell out of a handrail and it was a six inch gap in between pickets and they squeezed their way right on through. Four inches, you'd have to be terrifically small in order to get through there. On your pickets here, as you can see the gap here is the same as the gap right over here. That's due to how we did layout. I'll show you guys that in just a second. On all of your pickets, as I told you guys earlier, our handrail top is 42 inches, that is code. And then in between all of them will be three and three quarter. By code, we have to be under four. So I go three and three quarter, quarter inch under, and everything works out great. Let's go over layout real quick. It's kind of hard to see, but we're working on a railing here. We have a bottom two by four that's three and a half inches up. And then the top one just goes right up underneath our top cap there, which is a two by six. We have a four by four post. We have a two by six top cap. We have a one inch reveal on our top cap from there to there. And on the back side from there to there. I find center from here to here. Then I have layout on this little two by two with a center mark right there. That allows me to lay out everything with ease and all of our pickets come out great. Everything's nice and centered too. If you start on one end and work your way down, you'll have a three and a half inch gap here and a one inch gap here. It doesn't look very good. Finding your center and going off of it ensures that both sides look the same.